Harry, who studies how the brain learns complex behaviors. But they see 
the reflection of their normal arm where they would expect their phantom limb to be. And after doing exercises like this for days and weeks, the patients uniformly report that with this visual feedback therapy, they learn eventually the phantom limb decreases in pain, and in some cases, the phantom limb, they say, it's amazing, it's just gone. It's not there anymore. So this plasticity that was revealed upon injury is also able to help these patients. So that was plasticity in the brain of an adult that was surprising to scientists. And now I want to do a quick demonstration of plasticity in adults that might be surprising to you. And this happens on a much faster time scale. So I have some volunteers from the audience. <laughs> Very willing volunteers, I assure you. Okay, so Tiago, you can come up on stage. So Tiago is going to wear these goggles, and he has a very simple task. Well, actually, don't put them on quite yet. So first, no, 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 don't put them on yet. <laughs> okay, so he's going to throw to his friend Sophia. He's going to catch the ball. Okay. Okay, so he's a pretty good thrower, right? <laughs> Sophia, maybe not so much. <laughs> um, okay, so now I'm going to ask Tiago to put on those goggles. And now I'm just going to ask him to throw to Sophia one more time. See what happens. <laughs> ah, Sophia, you have to stand still. <laughs> so maybe the volunteers in the front row could help us catch them if they can clear. So, what happened? Well, I haven't told you what the goggles are. <laughs> what the goggles are that Tiago is <laughs> that Tiago is wearing, but I'll tell you that now. So, the goggles Tiago is wearing, as you may guess, are actually shifting his visual field. So these are these are optical prisms that are making the world appear to Tiago as if it's displaced to the left. Now. <laughs> Yeah, they're supposed to be learning to actually throw the ball so that it, actually, it does hit Sophia. So he's doing a little bit better. We'll give him a few more minutes. I'll tell you, so obviously this, if Tiago eventually learns to do this, this is an example of learning, and we know that learning must be represented by changes in the brain. There must be some kind of plasticity. <laughs> Now eventually, in, in most subjects, <laughs> there's initially a large error and then they are able to successfully throw. So I just want to give him a chance to do a couple more and then we'll see what happens when he takes the goggles off. Um, one more good one, Tiago, one more good one. Okay, all right. Now, could you please take the goggles off and keep throwing? <laughs> <laughs> so now you see he's still missing, but he's missing in the other direction, right? So the goggles displaced his world to the left, but eventually he got used to seeing things to the left, and so that started to feel like straight ahead to him. So his entire brain changed the way it interpreted his sensory input, which was obviously unreliable, and it changed the way he made his motor, his movement response. But then after he took the goggles off, that new reality was wrong, and so he took his goggles off, and now his, we find that his brain has compensated for the effect of the goggles, and now he makes the mistakes with the right. Thank you very much. So, maybe you think this is just a trick, it's an illusion, but I think it's really important to point out that this is happening not just when we put on prism goggles, but what happens when we put on these prism goggles is that it reveals the fact that our brains are actually constantly adapting to new environments and new experiences. So the take home message is that we are constantly relearning. Tiago has presumably, presumably, thrown things before and, <laughs> and hit the target for many, many years. And yet just a few moments, or maybe a little bit more than a few moments, of practice have allowed him to completely change the relationship between his visual experience and his movement output. So our brains are really constantly recalibrating, constant re constantly relearning. And tricks like this we can use in the laboratory to reveal these changes in the brain. So we know that the brain can change on multiple timescales. It can change very quickly, as in the case of the prison goggles, where they order seconds or minutes. 
But we can also learn much more complex tasks that take more time, uh, up to all the way up to learning a language, which could take many years, especially if it's Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, what do we know about how this kind of learning takes place in the brain? Well, we have some ideas, but it's still an active area of research. We do know that there are mechanisms also in the brain of plasticity that take place on multiple timescales. So we have mechanisms that I'll describe a little bit each of these, called synaptic plasticity that operates on the order of seconds and minutes, structural plasticity, which is, takes a little bit longer, and finally, we know now that even in adulthood, as Tiago told you in the movie, new neurons can be incorporated into brain circuits. We call this neurogenesis. So to show you synaptic plasticity, when we say synaptic plasticity, what we mean is that the strength of already existing connections between neurons in the brain changes with experience. So the strength of synapses can go up or down, and this can happen on just within a few seconds. It can also take minutes, and it can last for hours. Well, it can last much longer than for hours. It's harder to study that in the laboratory. And then we know that on these intermediate time scales, there is also a phenomenon called structural plasticity. So in structural plasticity, not only do the strength of connections that are already existing change, but here the shape of neurons can actually change. And connections that didn't exist can be formed, and the previously existing connections between neurons can be lost. On a longer time scale, we know that there's neurogenesis. And in neurogenesis, this is really fascinating, new neurons need to be born, they need to arrive in the correct location, and they need to respond to some kind of signals that tell them how to incorporate their connections with all, within already existing neural circuits. So it's still an active area of research in neuroscience, how these different forms of plasticity relate to learning specific skills. And we have researchers in the champagne Mo who are working on studying the mechanisms and the functional consequences of each of these forms of plasticity. So I want to leave you um, with a little bit of advice. So what can you do to keep your brain plastic as you age? So in English we say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And in Portuguese I think you say you can't teach an old donkey a new language. <laughs> but since we know now that the brain is plastic into adulthood, we know that, it's tr that those are not true. We can still teach an old dog new tricks, although it might be a little bit harder. So how can we make it as easy as possible? Well, I just wanted to show you an example. You might, there are also lots of internet websites that say, you know, train your brain, buy our puzzle set, and you'll stay smart forever. Um, but <laughs> but you, don't, you don't have to, don't give them your money, please. All you have to do is play a game of catch, maybe with a new pair of glasses, or uh, learn a new hobby, engage in a new skill, maybe a new sport. And this is just a study showing that even simple things like crossword puzzles into your older years uh, can really be protective against cognitive decline that's often seen in old age. So this is just a study where they had uh, residents of a nursing home, and they compared the residents who did crossword puzzles regularly versus those who didn't. And they actually found a remarkable result, which was that the participation in crossword puzzles slowed the decline of cognitive function by 2.5 years, which is really tremendous. So um, crossword puzzles worked. Incidentally, taking classes in the nursing home did not work on its own. So it wasn't just you know, exposure to learning new material, but the actual effort of thinking about the puzzles worked. At least that's the so the moral of the story is if you want to keep your brain as plastic as you can into old age, you should use it or lose it. <laughs>